All right, what's up, listeners? Episode 42 coming at you. Meet Dwell A podcast with Connor O'Leary and Spencer Chipping. Uh, we spent about an hour talking with Connor all about his career as a professional cyclist, uh, how he overcame testicular cancer as a 19 year old at Skyline High School. Dude, how he won the amazing race with his dad. How cool is that? Uh, and a lot of great advice from Connor when it comes to just getting along with life and how cycling has kind of taught him those lessons about what it takes to be a good man, uh, a great cyclist, and a good father. So uh, super grateful to Connor. Thankful for the experiences that we've had this summer riding together. Dude's a beast. When Connor wants to lay it down, dude, it happens. Uh, his mind is so powerful. And then to mix that with how strong he is as an athlete is a killer combination. You can see why he went so far as a professional cyclist in Europe. So uh, all I love to Connor, grateful that he would be on. Thankful for each of you as listeners. Uh, we're moving closer to team camp. Grateful for all those that have registered. Uh, we have over 70 people registered to be down in St. George, March 17th uh, through the 20th. Incredible raffle prizes in the works from Mercury, Ventum. Uh, we're working on a deal right now uh, with a couple glasses companies and a, a free uh, registration to Lodija. We're going to pull that hat out. Uh, some all road registrations from Ventum. So super fun raffle moving forward. Uh, and it looks like we're going to do kit pickup right around that second or first week of February. So details on that coming soon. Anyway, all my love and uh, enjoy the episode. Thanks. All right, what's up? Me Dwell a podcast episode. I don't even know now. What is this? 42? 40, yeah. Uh, Connor O'Leary, welcome, Connor. Thank you, guys. And then uh, Chip, welcome, Chip. Yeah, thank you. Welcome, Connor. Dude, this is going to be great. Uh, if you don't know Connor, this is it. We're, gonna, we're going deep. Just kidding. I don't know how deep we're going to go. <laughs> going that deep. <laughs> um, man, it's uh, end of January current training status connor what you're a uh, rough yeah. week yeah rough week R rough <laughs> week with the covid uh i can say i have been on the bike zero times uh but tomorrow's a new day tomorrow's the day so uh hey you've um, got we've got the zwift account man it's set up We're ready. yeah is there is, is there a ride tomorrow there's a ride tomorrow six o'clock oh man i'll get smoked but i'm coming okay <laughs> chip what do you have planned um tomorrow would be a fat bike day for me the uh, sun's gonna be out fresh just small little layer of snow on there to make it sticky yep um, pipeline tomorrow would be pipeline uh, or to the top of mill creek either or would be really good tomorrow you know you put out that uh i don't know where you put that request out you said what what did you say you would you would actually pay for Ooh. another team member to buy a fat bike to ride this is, <laughs> this is a big audience to announce this and, and, and yes i am so amped about it and i have been for years now but i would love to have a partner riding side by side me in the snow it gets lonely in those cold dark mornings up there i bet I'd be terrified. I'm in. At the top. I'm in. Oh, <laughs> do you do you have like the bar mitts and and the whole shebang? I mean, are you getting cold out there? I don't get. I do not uh, call out to volley on this, but I I literally do not get cold. I do wear a ski helmet and goggles while riding. Um, I think nice. that's key. But I don't use the bar mitts only because of looks. I feel like my ski yeah. gloves are. <laughs> warm enough i can't i don't like those bar mitts yeah 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 fair enough Dude, fair enough those are like permanently attached uh -huh. to to the like you can't like take them on and off they're like on there yep i did i feel like it would kind of take away from my mojo of kind of the groove in and out of things they're a <laughs> little too big yeah yeah fair enough fair enough that's fun all right good uh connor i first met you I don't know, Chip. I actually don't know your dating history of Connor. I met you, Connor, June seventh, twenty sixteen. Was the first time Adam Barker brought you on a ride. We rode like PC Loop up Parleys and then up Guardsman. Um, that was the first time we ever met. Uh, did, did you guys have a deeper history than that beyond bike? Yeah. 
there there is a lot to this story that Stu is bringing up that I'm gonna <laughs> just add in here and there right. so if we can just start with we started up Parley's wait, wait and... hold on first off started up Parley's that was the first ride I did with me Duelle <laughs> yeah and Correct. I was like who are the who are these psychopaths oh, that Correct. ride up Parley's Canyon we just took the on-ramp <laughs> at the top of 33rd south on to i-80 <laughs> and that's and so connor took the words out of my mouth that i was going to share that he was sharing with me at the back and i just said so connor is this a uh, common ride for you and he's like not typical that i would uh ride up the freeway no oh uh, my gosh, so and funny. and i've done it multiple times now with, uh -huh. with, with you guys yeah um Oh, man, I remember that ride so well. That is so funny. You you posted that, Stu. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that brought back some good memories. I remember, um, I didn't know you. I, I really didn't know who you were. And when we got to the guardsman segment, I think, I remember your words. Exactly. You said, I'm going to give this one a go, fellas. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, give it a go. Like, whatever that means. And you were just like, boom, like, goodbye. Goodbye. And we, I was just like laughing. Adam was like, oh, there he goes. I'm like, well, who is, what is he doing? Who is that guy? Oh, man. So oh, funny. that is so funny, man. <laughs> that picture, that picture on that Strava is gold. Yep. <laughs> Stu's glasses are just top right? notch. Dude, yep. I, I wonder if you, did you take that picture? Yes. Yes, he you must have. That's, that's, uh huh. That's a classic. Okay. That is so uh, funny. Maybe Connor, I know. So Connor lives in, I'll just brief introduction. So Connor lives in holiday. Um, we are this last summer. We've had a lot of fun. We rode a lot together, a lot of uh, fun. Me dwelly rides with Connor. We're grateful to share Tibbles. So many wonderful experiences to Tibble fork and back. Um, beautiful family. So Connor's here in uh, Holiday, lives in Holiday. And Connor, remind me, um, one daughter or two, a daughter on the way? Two, 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 two daughters, daughters. And, and actually one child on the way, which one is way. Okay. TBD. Yeah, unknown TBD. at this point. TBD. Wonderful. Yeah. And then Connor works full-time as a uh, real estate. Do I call you a developer? What do I call you? Yeah, that that works. Uh, I work in real estate, do some development <laughs> by by multifamily. I, I don't know what I do, man. Okay. But that, that sounds good to me. But in a former life, um, professional cyclist, amazing race winner. Oh, man, we're gonna have to dig into that. I read some controversial <laughs> articles yesterday. About okay. your race tactics. <laughs> I'm like, dude, who is caring enough to write this? <laughs> Serious. Oh, dude, I got so much hate on so many levels. Like, it's just like, there's some psychopaths out Whoa. there. Like, what, do something better with your time. I'm like, aren't we on season 30 here? Do <laughs> yeah. we really care? Oh, oh um, that's so funny. But, but beyond that, Connor, maybe you could introduce like your background, where you grew up, your family, and kind of how you got into where you are right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that sounds great. Uh, happy to be here, guys. So, like Stu said, uh, you know, living holiday. Honestly, uh, almost been in holiday my entire life. So I was born in Seattle, moved to Salt Lake when I was young. Uh, you know, graduated from Skyline, but um, yeah, Utah has been my home. You know, obviously, I've traveled abroad, uh, cycling, lived over in Europe, but uh, you know, my roots are here in Utah. I've got two beautiful girls, uh, my wife, Jessie, who, you know, uh, Chip, you know, Stu, you met her once or twice. She's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that's, that's kind of me in a nutshell. I mean, I got started cycling uh, from a really early age. I was nine years old and I, I grew up with four sisters. So being the only boy my dad kind of relied on me as his, you know, outdoor slash adventure buddy. I kind of just did whatever he did. Uh, and when I was <clears throat> eight years old, he said, Hey, I want to, I want to do this ride across Iowa called rag ride registered annual great bicycle ride across Iowa. It's 500 miles in about a week. Um, and my mom said, you're not doing that. You're not leaving the family for a week to go do a bike ride by yourself. And he said, no, 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 I'm, I'm taking Connor with me. And, and I was eight. <laughs> um, 
So uh, the stipulation was I had to ride 500 miles to train. And, and if I rode the 500 miles, I could go. So I, I rode 500 miles on this crappy old steel mountain bike. Oh uh, and then right before the ride, he bought me my first road bike, which was like the smallest, you know, full size 700 C wheel road bike you could buy. That was just like 30 pounds. <laughs> um, but that, that kickstarted it all. I mean, I, I was the youngest person to do that ride and then did it for the, uh, five consecutive years after that. And then kind of uh, dipped my toe into the racing scene. Wow. wow. Were you like an athletic kid, Connor? I mean, was this like a natural? Hmm? I, I don't, I mean, yeah, I had some, some athletics, I guess you could say, but I don't, I don't think I was a, a freak by any means. Um, but I just, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I would get up. My dad has always been like, like you guys. I mean, he was up at five out riding. And so he would drag me along and mm-hmm. I, I, I should have said, no, I don't, I don't know why I didn't, <laughs> but you know, I'm like up at five every morning, you know, nine, 10 years old riding 30 miles. Um, awesome. and, and somehow I just, I liked it. I loved it. And when I started racing, that's when I really thought, oh man, this is fun. And when was that high school? Did you start doing official stuff so, then? So I started like, I remember riding the shoreline one day with my dad and we were talking about bikes and he's like, you know, you could probably race if you wanted to. And I said, oh man, yeah, that would be so cool. I don't know where there are races, blah, blah, blah. And uh, it turned out that nationals, like the junior nationals was in Park City that year. And so... I was like, yeah, let's, let's do nationals, I guess, you know, my first race will be nationals. And it was wild, right? You have these like 13 year olds showing up with like, you know, the nicest bikes, trainers. I mean, I did, I was like so far out of my league, Um, but uh, I did okay. Not great. And then uh, the next year came back and, you know, I was on, on the podium for every race. And so, that's when I was like, man, I'm, I'm kind of good at this. Uh, it's fun to be good. And, and I just kind of took it from there. Chip, any follow-up questions? Yeah. There? One thing about, um, the time spent with your dad is, uh, not only in cycling Connor, but you have a, uh, a deep passion for fishing as well. Is that correct? that is correct yes so uh, and, and so a lot of time spent up in um one of my favorite places up in in montana as well yep yeah, yep so uh yeah a lot of time up there in, in idaho montana border um actually chip uh you were the one that told me to do that ride up to um the tower oh man, the tower and i did that this last summer it was the first first ride i did on my gravel bike yep um and man that climb is gnarly was it was it that loose for you was it yeah yeah it's that is so gnarly dude i i had the i thought i was like you know what i'm just gonna I'm going to really give it up this thing and see what it is. <laughs> there it is I'm again. I'm going to give it a go, boys. I, I'm, glad I, I'm glad I wasn't there that day. <laughs> uh, I, I like, I drank two Red Bulls and like, yes. full gas, and I, I, I could not, I could not keep like, man, that like, oh, it was, that was brutal. I love yeah. when brutal. Connor says he's going to give it a go. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, man. Uh, but anyways, yeah, that's, that's a great ride. And, uh, yeah, fishing, fishing is a huge, uh, other than cycling. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, fishing is my biggest hobby for sure. Connor, maybe talk more about your dad. Like, um, you guys did this amazing race. You're both, we didn't mention this in the interview, but, or the introduction, but you're both cancer survivors. Uh, maybe let's talk about that, how you got into that amazing race. And then uh, we'll see where that goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, like, like I said before, my dad and I have a really special bond. I'm the youngest of five, the only boy. So we grew up skiing, biking, fishing, you know, doing everything that my sister didn't want to do. Uh, and that led to, you know, uh, them thinking I'm the favorite child, but really it's just, uh, I, I enjoy doing those things. Uh, and, and we share those same hobbies. Um, but yeah, we, we grew up doing a lot together. I mean, he is hands, hands down, probably my best friend still to this day, do a lot together. 
Um, and <clears throat> yeah, he, he was diagnosed with cancer when I was in high school, which was really tough. Uh, and, and kind of being on both sides of that, that coin being diagnosed and having a loved one diagnosed, uh, man, I can tell you, it's so much harder watching somebody you love go through that than, than personally going through that yourself. It's just, uh, tough, you know, you feel helpless. And so, um, that was, that was rough. He's, he's totally fine now. Um, but, uh, yeah, definitely gave him, I think, uh, a new perspective on life. You know, he, he commuted to Denver five days a week for work, you know, wasn't, wasn't home, uh, you know, hardly ever. And, and after that, he, he really pumped the brakes and, and, you know, uh, just kind of reflected on, on what life is about. And, so uh, from that point on, he, he's been pretty much retired. And so he's, he's got to come watch me race all over the world. And we've done some pretty incredible stuff together, including the amazing race, which uh, was definitely uh, <clears throat> my brainchild. You know, I remember growing up loving the amazing race, just like <laughs> seeing these people travel all over the world. And uh, I, I remember when I was like probably 15 or 16, we were watching it one Sunday, you know, the whole family. And I was like, man, mom, I, dad and I would crush it on that show. Uh, <laughs> and fast forward, you know, after I was diagnosed with cancer, that's, that's when I applied when I was healthy and dumb luck, we got invited to, to participate. Oh my gosh. And then, so, I end, but oh, go ahead, Chip. Yeah. So <laughs> Talk, talk about the location of like, I, I would love to hear just all things amazing race, Connor. I, I tell you what, that is, it is just a wild experience. Um, you know, it's, it's funny because like I had no desire to ever be on TV, let alone a, a reality <laughs> TV show. Um, but uh, I thought a free trip around the world, you know, with a chance to win a million bucks sounded pretty cool uh, and, and just see some incredible places. Uh, but it's, it is insane, right? Because the further you get, and, and I'm a naturally competitive person. And so like, I just had tunnel vision for 21 days. Like I was just like, it was on and definitely had my competitive nature come out. Um, but it was, yeah, it, the further you get, the more stressful it gets. You're like, holy smokes, I could win this thing. And it was just a crazy experience altogether, to be honest. And you guys went twice. Your dad hurt his Achilles, right? And then yeah. he came back for like an all-star season. Right, right. Yeah, the first go around, my dad ruptured his Achilles tendon when he was running on the beach. And when he like hobbled up to the mat or whatever after he ruptured it, He's like, oh man, Connor, I think I just ruptured my Achilles tendon. And I'm like, okay, dad, like sure pump the did. brakes on the drama. You probably <laughs> rolled your ankle. Um, but yeah, he, uh, man, he, he tore his calf muscle and, and ruptured his Achilles. It was Oof. pretty brutal. Yeah. But I read, dude, you guys stayed on for like two more episodes. Were you wheeling oh, yeah. him around in a wheelchair? Oh, like, what were you doing? Yeah, man. Yeah. Like, <laughs> We did not want to quit. Um, the only reason we stopped was his doctor was like, Hey, if you don't get home and have surgery, you're going to have prolonged damage. But yeah, wow. we, uh, we kept racing. I pushed him in a wheelchair and he's been on crutches so many times in his life and he can go like mock seven on crutches. So, um, and we, we won every, we won every leg after that. And oh people God. were like, Oh, you're cheating. Like pushing him in a wheelchair. I was like, the man what? is handicapped, <laughs> um, but yeah, it was pretty, pretty funny. So good. So you guys came back all-star and then you won a freaking million dollars, dude. That's right, man. Yeah. We came back and, uh, you know, there's so much luck involved uh, hmm. on that, but, uh, we got really lucky. Yeah. We ended up winning at the second go around and won like six out of the 12 legs. So, so cool. Uh, yeah, it was pretty, pretty fun. It was a cool, definitely a, a memorable experience to share with your dad. And you had some beautiful hair. I seen the picture. Uh, man, those locks. Yeah. Oh yeah. I had, 
I get made fun of all the time for that. What? Who's making fun? That's rude. <laughs> all right. Well, if you didn't, if you didn't know, um, Connor's already talked about it. He he races a professional cyclist. Maybe let's talk about how does one like trajectory into that experience, Connor? Like, as a youth, you'd already started, but then if you look at your stats, I mean, you're over in Europe. You're living there for years. I mean, how does it go as you get picked up by a pro team, a youth team? I mean, maybe give some insight. Yeah. 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 I, I you know, that it all kind of started to be honest, believe it or not on uh, my first team I raced for was me dwelling. Yes. What? Uh, with like the barbacoa, the blue and orange kit. <laughs> that was, that was my first kit. Um, and I just was like, man, this is freaking awesome. I've made it. Uh, but, uh, there, there was a, a few juniors and there was a guy named Clyde Doan locally who raced for Barbacoa, who kind of took a few guys under his wing and would do weekly rides. Um, and then, like I said, kind of really started taking it more serious when I was 15, 16 years old. Uh, and that's kind of when I took my first trip over to Europe with the junior national team uh, and kind of got in the, the USA development pipeline. And that's really, at least when I kind of grew up racing, if you wanted to make it, that was like the best trajectory and the best likelihood of, of getting to Europe, getting noticed, you know, it was doing all of the, the USA cycling regional development camps, which then led to the national team camp, uh, where they, you know, do all the testing kind of, really try to see what your your potential or capability is um but yeah getting in that that national team pipeline was huge for me that's where i started getting noticed you know kind of getting some results on the national level and then uh you know that led to spending time over in europe and getting picked up by bontrager livestrong and and the national team there's one thing you don't if you don't know if you've never ridden with connor um one of your dude this attribute just is inspiring it, even if he's not like 100 percent, you know like so maybe we're riding for an hour and he's like i'm not feeling it i'm not feeling it. all of a sudden we're doing like 400 watts and he's just <laughs> he will not back down he's gonna go dude. that's my most favorite thing is that even though how bad somehow you can find it somehow you can dig in and if i, I if, go no i was just gonna say that's that's cycling right yes uh, that's why that's why i love it man it's like you you have to just enjoy suffering to some degree right (laughs) well that's what i was gonna ask so as as you were comparing yourself with all these other juniors and stuff are you naturally gifted is it incredible competitive nature are you willing to work hard is it a combination i mean what is it that maybe set you apart as you connected with all these guys yeah, I, I think it's a combination, but um, I think more than anything, it's a, a lot of that, I think, <clears throat> excuse me, especially early on, I, I think some of it was probably, you know, maturing faster than others, but I think that kind of evens out when you get to, you know, kind of the 17, 18 year old category, but um, man, it's, it really is, I think, especially when you get to that high level, just who, who can suffer more, Uh you know, who can, who can kind of, uh, you know, tell your legs to shut up and keep pedaling. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, excuse me. It's kind of the mental fortitude, which I, I really enjoy. It's such a mind game. Um, and yeah, it's no question. It's, it's hard work. Right. Um, I mean, I was, I was spending, shoot, probably as much time as you guys spend on the bike. You're on the bike so freaking much. (laughs) But I was doing 30 to 35 hour weeks, um, probably from the time I was like 18 uh, and 20, 25 hour weeks before that. So it was, it was not a conventional like youth, I would say, right? Um, I graduated high school early. I was more focused on like rest recovery training than I was going out with friends. So I feel like I definitely missed some of that traditional uh, you know, high school life, but I mean, <clears throat> the trade-off was fantastic. Yeah. Well, when we've ridden together, you've talked a lot about, I mean, like you drop like, Oh yeah. When I was with Lance, like blah, blah, blah. 
maybe talk about that. Like, uh, what is that like? Like, what was life like on the team and, and what you're training and race? That would, it, it's just like fascinating. It's not a thing that anybody knows about. Yeah. Yeah. It, man, I tell you what, it, it really was such a cool experience. Um, riding with some of those guys and some of those bigger names, you know, I, I did quite a bit of riding with Lance. Um, I'd spend, uh, weeks in Texas where he was at. Uh, and then we would do some training camps in California, man, that man is just the most competitive person I have ever met. Like <laughs> oh my gosh. just, just, you know, he would put like you'd be riding or doing a climb and he would be like, all right, first one at the top gets a thousand bucks. And it was like <laughs> purely, purely <laughs> just like to add a level of what? like competition. Oh, yeah. yeah. To 18 uh, year olds, you're like a thousand yeah. bucks on the line for this climb. Oh yeah. You're just like frothing at the mouth, you know? Uh, and I remember one, one day in California, he put like a thousand bucks on this climb <laughs> and he got, he got beat by Joe Dombrowski. Oh yeah. Um, and who, who, I don't, I don't know who he's riding for this year, but rode for sky and, and Cannondale. Um, but yeah, Joe beat him and Lance was so pissed, man. He didn't even stop at the top. He just kept, he just He's kept like, riding no, new finish line <laughs> suckers. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, but yeah, uh, like every ride he would do, uh, alone or like with, with a group, he had a follow car. Um, it's, it's, he's, I tell you what, that guy, like just hardcore competitor, hmm. um, but he did a, you know, he did a lot for me. I, I remember actually it was another stupid, like, I don't know what he put on the line or who put it on, but some race simulation. And I ended up crashing and breaking my collarbone. Uh, and it was like a stupid training ride. Um, and anyways, I, I was getting ready to fly home from California just to kind of recover. Um, and he's like, Hey, he comes up to my hotel room. And he's like, Hey man, he's like, just grab your bags and, and come down the car in like 20 minutes. And he flew me home on his private jet and then wow. flew, flew right back to California. So it's like, mm. you know, I think he gets this really bad rap and has kind of been a scapegoat in the cycling world for, mm -hmm. you know, all, all of the, the, uh, you know, steroids and, and, what have you but uh yeah for, for me he was a, a really cool guy really really nice um and he's done a lot for the cancer community as well so yeah very cool so connor during that whole time that team was live strong that you were racing with and training with at the time it which, was yeah which was yeah. like the development team for the the lance owned and ran the live strong team during that Correct. Time. Correct. Yep. So it was like the feeder team for Radio Shack. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, still pro Connie, but then like step up to world tour um, for like Radio Shack. And, and it changed. Uh, the title sponsor changed every year. I raced with them for, you know, four years. Um, but it was, yeah, it was Trek Livestrong, Bond Tricker Livestrong, Livestrong, and then kind of the Hoggins Berman uh and it's 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 evolved or changed sponsors but uh yeah the team's still still alive and man it, it just produces some really phenomenal cyclists um if you kind of look at the pedigree of, of who's come through that program um staying on this same topic connor the the special relationship between you and lance is is the cancer piece and and the live strong foundation um, can we move into that and the, and the part that is, um, from, from my understanding, you were able to utilize those services with the Livestrong Foundation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I was really fortunate, right? When I was uh, diagnosed with, with, with testicular cancer, I was 19 years old. Uh, and I remember I was diagnosed and, and Lance called me the day before the Tour de France or, or the day of the prologue to check up and say, hey, you know, I, I know you just got diagnosed. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to have my doctor call you. And this was like a Sunday, you know, 10 minutes later, the top testicular cancer doctor in the world, you know, personally calls me on a Sunday 
and essentially takes my case, you know, handles all of all of my scans and reading my pathology and surgery and, you know, writing my chemo regimen. So uh, that for me was a huge blessing um, just to have that as a resource. And then, you know, obviously have kind of the full support of, of you know, the team, but also my family and and the Livestrong Foundation. Wow. So did you spend, um, was your, was your chemo and, um, the time that you spent doing that in Texas or was it in Salt Lake city? It was, it was up at Huntsman. So I, I flew back actually to Indiana where, where Dr. Einhorn, Lance's doctor, um, practices, and then did a bunch of scans, tests. Um, he read my pathology and then he coordinated with my doctors mm-hmm. up at Huntsman for all my treatment. Um, and so it was, it was nice to be, yeah, kind of have, have Salt Lake as a home base and not be somewhere foreign. Man. Connor, what was it like? I mean, I don't know Man. any, I don't know any young kids when I was young that, that went through that. Yeah, it was, uh, it was tough, right? I mean, uh, I just, uh, I, it's, it's tough to, I, I felt like I was watching my life on the sidelines, right? I stopped racing. I had a bunch of friends serving missions at the time. Um, and yeah, I can say that it was the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Um, yeah, that chemotherapy is just brutal. It, it, it really knocked me down. I mean, I, I was just like, kind of scrolling through these questions and it made me reflect and I started looking at some photos and man, I was, uh, yeah, I was like 125 pounds, uh, which, uh, you know, just kind of skin and bones bald and just felt really, really terrible. Um, but, uh, it, it gives you perspective for sure. Right. I mean, I, I would go up to, to get the chemo every day and man, there would be people that just didn't show up the next day. Uh, and so, uh, it was, it, it, it wasn't something I would ever do again, but I feel like it really gave me a perspective on life and, and really made me understand, I guess, or realize that, uh, life is a pretty fragile thing and you just never know what tomorrow holds. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it was, it was a crazy experience and, and nothing I would ever do again, but I learned some pretty valuable lessons from it. How'd you get through it? Family or, I mean, yeah, I, I think having a good support system was, was key for me, but, uh, I, I honestly believe that kind of the mental toughness, the ability to focus mm-hmm. really what cycling taught me was huge for me. Um, it, it like that mental fortitude and just that kind of that stubbornness that I like inherently have, uh, helped, helped a lot. Um, because, uh, like I said, I mean, at 19, I, it was just, uh, yeah, it was like nothing I'd ever, ever had to go through and, and hope I don't ever have to go through anything like that again, but, uh, definitely, definitely scary. I mean, my, uh, and, and not to ramble here, but you know, I got, I ended up getting blood clots in my lungs that, that almost killed me. Um, and I remember just like <clears throat> sitting in intensive care fully kind of thinking that I'm going to die, you know, and I think my parents thought the same thing and, uh, just, yeah, it was just a wild, wild time. Yeah. I read that. I read a story. I mean, I was looking at some old articles that experience you had with those blood clots, that was crazy. I mean, they were like basically saying if these blood clots come loose from around your port, you're a dead man. Yeah. 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 They, so I had clots that exploded in my lungs and then I had like a big clot that was on my port, which is where they would administer the chemo. Mm -hmm. And they were like, they didn't know what to do because they didn't want to try to remove it because that clot would break loose. And man, they like, yeah, it was just, it was touch and go there, honestly, for probably three weeks. Um, and I was just like in a morphine induced coma basically for that time. But, uh, yeah, it that that for me was was the biggest setback. I think getting back on the bike was the blood clots because uh, it left so much scar tissue in my lungs that mm. 
the, the doctor was basically like, you know, it's a total toss up gamble if you're going to get back to that level. Um, which, uh, yeah, just, just fortunate it worked out. So if I look at your pro cycle stats, you were racing 2008, 2009, 2010. So it was 2011. That was when you were going through it. <clears throat> that might be, I don't know if those are totally accurate, honestly, because oh, I, well, actually it's probably, that's probably about the same timeline. I, I, I stopped racing 2010. Okay. Uh, probably got back to racing 2011. Yeah, that's right. Um, and it, it, it took a while. So I like, I, I thought, again, I was like, you're young and dumb, but I was like, all right, I'm going to get back on the bike and I'm just going to be an animal. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was not the case. It, it took a lot of time. And, uh, I, I ended up moving to, excuse me. I ended up moving to, to Hawaii after my treatment. And after I was kind of in the clear just to get down to sea level and <clears throat> kind of reset. Uh, and so that's where I started riding again. But man, like I would just ride and I would just like, not to get too gnarly, but I would just like cough up like these like fibrous, like bloody, like Ooh. just, yeah, it was gnarly. Uh, and it yeah. just killed, it just killed to, to ride hard. Um, I really that's ride just, it all. Just so we understand, Connor, that's just part of the recovery afterwards. And yeah that just comes for a little while after or a long time after. Yeah, that, that was, a, that was a few months. Um, and, and it took probably six months where I was like, okay, I'm, I'm getting back, back to being fit, but I guess I didn't really know what fit was. Cause, uh, you know, before I had like, not to sound arrogant, but I had been fit right since such an early age. And, uh, you forget what that, is and man it's really hard to get back there um like i remember doing the east canyon road race my first race back and i like i had these like lofty ambitions i was like okay this is my first race back like i'm gonna crush um and man i was dropped in the first five minutes <laughs> um, uh, like I, I, and I, dude, I flipped around, went back to the car and I was like, F this. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I, I, I vividly remember, like I, I broke down in tears in the car. My dad was there and you know, <clears throat> it, it, I got over it. Right. I just was feeling sorry for myself, but, uh, yeah, it was a rude awakening and it was, a, uh, it was a, a much longer recovery and return to cycling than I thought it would be. Dang. Yeah. But, but dude, I'm looking here. You did the tour of Utah multiple times, right? Dude, you took sixth as the national championship race in 2013 as the under 23, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 So it was, I mean, you I, came I got, back. I mean, you freaking crushed. Yeah, it was, it was fun. And, and honestly, uh, where I kind of found my niche was, man, first off winning a bike race. I don't care if it's, the cat five race it is hard right like dude wh whoever wins a race man kudos to them um and i can say i didn't win many of them i mean local races i had some podiums in europe but wh where i really and what i think i enjoyed most in cycling was like th the team perspective um being a good teammate uh i mean i would i would turn myself inside out for for anyone on my team and uh it was just a really cool dynamic when you get kind of in the flow with a bunch of guys you know and trust and you guys put together a race plan and, and watch it come to fruition is there's nothing cooler um and that's honestly that's kind of where i've like found the love again is is riding with you guys um because you have such a a cool team dynamic and camaraderie uh, and it's just so fun to, you know, turn yourself inside out with a bunch of guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Just uh, so we can get that King of the Mountain on Tibble Flats, baby. Oh man. <laughs> 2022 is the year. 2022. We just gotta, gotta do it. We just gotta do it with a tailwind, man. 
Exactly. I've got a picture of Tibble above my bed. <laughs> I got a picture of that stupid flat you got. So. Oh, <laughs> man. That's... Tell you what, that was like, that was a true teammate move, dude. I flat last time going up Tibble. And that was funny. I was just gutted and freaking. He's like, no, just leave me. Just leave me. And I'm like, no, we'll wait. And I'm like, okay, we'll change your tire. He's Oh, I don't have anything to change it with. He has nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, the the pros have cars behind him, Stu. That's he's still used to having someone was, pull up. Hand him I was a waiting from yeah, I was waiting for my wheel. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> where where were you, Stu? I was fully yeah, really oh expecting God. you to take that wheel off. That man. So That's right. <laughs> so true. Uh, that is so funny. <laughs> well, um, you so you kind of finished that part of your life. Um, you have a degree from the U, right? Like how I did do. you how did you transition into I mean post yeah cycling? Because I know and and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but when you started riding again this year with us, you were kind of coming off of maybe a bit of a break. Like you were just like uh, not disillusioned, but maybe like mm, why am I? Yeah. Doing oh. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Yeah. I mean, you got yeah. There was like one ride in particular with you guys this summer I, I think it was that ride we did up guardsman where i was yeah, yeah, like yeah. i was smoked <laughs> you know i i got and yeah that that was man where i was just thinking of that guardsman ride now tunnel vision yeah. mm-hmm. that's when it was um, so cold that was the cold morning correct dude, that where, was when what? corby and those guys oh, took off and crushed yes. us yeah yeah they just freaking smoked everybody um and that's when i was like man i'm 20 pounds overweight this hurts way too much Mm. uh but it was fun right it was like fun to have kind of that that uh that competition again and so yeah that's kind of when i started riding again because i took a lot of time off um you know after i stopped racing i haven't done a, a like a sanctioned event until this year right um you know, I did a few, a few kind of endurance races that Canada to Mexico, I think I've told you about, Mm -hmm. but other than that, I haven't like done a sanctioned race. Um, and, and I did, you know, I think two hill climbs this year, Mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, you guys were the ones that kind of got me back on the bike and, uh, kind of fell in love with it again, because it's, it's, it's funny. It's one of those things where you get in that cycle of, uh, you don't ride and then it's not fun because it hurts way too much uh and it's just it's so hard to get back to kind of that level where like yeah it hurts but it's like a a tolerable pain i guess Mm -hmm. Uh, so it it was fun to see you connor uh warming up to race and correct me if i'm wrong podium at uh the the hill climb uh that i saw you over by is the city City Creek, creek city creek yeah 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 yeah. man that was yeah that was fun that was a cold morning if if uh, everyone is seeing the um the cycle of connor throughout this podcast it it goes like this whether he is forced to take a break or decides to take a break as soon as he puts his mind back to it he is back on the podium so uh, i don't know about that but yeah that was uh I, I, that city Creek hill climb has always been like such, such a fun race. I, I grew up doing that race and it's just a mass start from the beginning. <laughs> so it's just like, but it's kind of like a cross race, right? Just like total pandemonium, uh, right out of the gates. And, uh, you know, man, it was a rude awakening into like lactate threshold. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't have, I still don't have like that repeat, like go that hard, that deep. Uh, I felt like this year I got to a point where I like knew my limits and if I could kind of ride within my limits, I could like, I could kind of perform. But the second you got me like 700 watt surges, like 10 of those, I was like, oh, this hurts too much. Um, But yeah, I ended up, I think I ended up, um, yeah second in the one twos and um 
third overall in that. And yeah, I just, uh, I'm, I'm rusty on my tactics as well. I'll say that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Connor, um, any, like you, you've been through a lot. I mean, family work, cancer. I mean, there's been a lot of experiences for such a young guy. I mean, you're only what 30. Yeah. Yep. 30, 30. 30. Um, any like top three pieces of advice you'd give out it doesn't it doesn't have to be about biking um anything you've learned over your uh life man i wish i wish i had some sage advice um <laughs> you do man I, you've been through a lot you know i i i think it's that cliche and and i i forget it a lot but uh life really is fragile right um and um that that's probably what I've taken away most from some of my experiences and, and kind of, uh, you know, being, you know, close to, close to dying, I guess, you know, when I was young is, man, you just never know what tomorrow holds. It's not worth the grudges. It's not worth <clears throat> the little things. And so, uh, for me, it's kind of all about perspective, uh, and then enjoy what you do. Right. Um, man, I, I just can't tell you how much fun I've had getting back on the bike uh that is like i didn't realize how much i missed it uh and so i'm grateful that i kind of found that passion and that joy again and and something i love um and yeah i I wish i had some some better uh a better message oh ed oh (laughs) Oh, ed Ed. (laughs) i tell you what man (laughs) what what's so fun uh about riding with with your squad is like it's just, it's a really good perspective on the bike. Nobody takes it too serious. Uh, it's, it's just a a really cool group. It's, it's really unique what you guys have going on. And, uh, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm, uh, I, I I think I can say I'm an honorary member, man, Uh of the Miguel Scott (laughs) squad. We just found out you were like an original blue and gold member. Are you kidding? You're going in the the hall of fame. (laughs) That's right. That's right. (laughs) Oh man. Nice. Dude, well, 2022, I don't know what we're going to do, but we got to figure out how to race together. I mean, we got to, we're, it is happening. It's going to be a great well, year. So point to point, uh, Leadville, what are, what are some of the races on the calendar for you guys? Yeah. yeah those ones, th- those ones definitely. Um, let's see, we have the Grodio looks really fun this year. The MV Grodio, um, Triple Crusher sign up is on Monday, right? Crusher. Oh, is it really? Yeah, twenty fourth. So Crusher. I'm gonna sign up for that if I can get in. Um, so. And I'll do the road races, Connor. I mean, I'll do East Canyon, and I Let's love do those. It. Yeah, and Let's what's do fun? It. They're doing Antelope Island on a Friday this year. I guess they couldn't get permits for Saturday. It'll be interesting to see how that goes on a Friday. Huh? Uh, there's nothing like riding Antelope Island right <laughs> connor here's kind of a here the, here would be a, a special uh invite and it would be this uh it sounds like lance is coming to the wasatch all road oh yeah Re- reason being because he is very close with the ownership of ventum and he's been writing and and crushing it on the ventum and they're going to have lance out and um it would be really cool to just see you take down lance on oh man when, when is that when is that race, when is race? Oh, here he goes let's go <laughs> so it is on uh have it right here in my calendar <clears throat> okay the grodio is on june 25th and you get into july so august uh 27th is all road is the wasatch all road that that all right let's i can't promise anything but i tell you what this year guys you guys got to keep me keep me accountable Uh make sure i'm (laughs) staying on the bike and getting out with you guys yeah that'd be so fun all right august 27th i can't wait to watch that i'll be filming the backside of you and lance no, yeah, whatever. Thousand dollars, Connor. Hey, you'll, top of yes, line. we'll throw it down. We will throw it down. <laughs> you want to? You want to hear like my favorite like introduction to Chip? Yeah. It was. I, did Jesse teach your kids piano? Yes. So, I remember like she came home one day and 
she was like, why? So like, you should get out on the bike or something. I was like, oh, I can't do that, babe. Like I'm busy. She's like, babe, Chip is on the bike every day at five and he has four <laughs> freaking kids. <laughs> I was like, okay, Jess, sorry. I'm not. Not Chip. that man. Yeah. <laughs> oh man so, shit like you, you guys are freaking hardcore zwift <laughs> out at five like man it's uh it's nice to yeah it's uh it's inspiring to say the least oh, you gotta man. get her done yep and it's good to have you on board yeah uh, with awesome. this connor so fun yeah it's a blast man I, yeah I'm, I'm excited to get out with you guys uh more in 2022 yep nice dude all right, Connor. Thanks, man. Thank you. Guys. Absolutely, guys. Thank you. Hey, guys.